So, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming, especially on a cold and snowy and wintry day like today. Um, I don't know if everybody knows everybody else. Um, I'm Carl. I think everybody knows me. Who are you again? <laughs> we don't recognize you with all that facial hair. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the cold weather. That's right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you know. I haven't seen you in, what, a couple of weeks? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, I'm Mark Couture. I teach at Chituaga Central. I started teaching a uh, computer applications class, and I'm really looking to go beyond. Um, I've used BASIC in most of my computer classes for the middle school, and unfortunately, the no longer support it. Microsoft doesn't support it, so you have to run it in DOS box. It doesn't really play nice with the rest of the computers, so now I'm looking to possibly branch into programming you know, Video games to Python or something like that. So this is like my scouting mission. Come in and see what you guys do. See if I can get into that. See if it's top secret. Yeah. Yeah. Taking over the world, right? Yeah. I knew you guys. I'm also an unconventional group member today. I'm actually a student of my teacher. I'm an undergrad here at UB. Um, but I do volunteer for Girl Development, which teaches local women about programming. Um, so I'm interested in the teaching aspect. And I also would like to learn about I'm Dave, and I teach way down south where it's warm in St. Bonaventure. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's it. All right. I'm Julie Johnson, and I'm um, a high school teacher at Williamsville North. Um, I teach computer programming and math there. And I don't know. Been That's a, it? I'm not an unconventional member. I've been around for a while. <laughs> I'm Debbie Sorrentino. I've been around for a while too, I guess. I owe you an email. Um, I do know that. No, I know you said, as, as soon as I saw you, I'm like, oh, she sent me an email I never responded to. Um, and yeah, I teach at Niagara County Community oh, wow. College, computer science. She can oh. hear now. Hi, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, turning her around. <laughs> you look pretty. <laughs> you look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, uh, and I'm Oliver, uh, and I teach here at UB. I teach databases, as the topic might suggest. Should I start? Yeah, by all means, please. All right, um, like I said, I'm Oliver. I teach databases here at UB, and uh, today I'm going to be talking about a fairly integral part of uh, databases. Um, the query language that most of them uh, use called SQL. Now, uh, let me start off with a little bit of history here. Um, the uh, SQL is based on um, some uh, sort of mathematical primitives that I'm really not going to go into, uh, but uh, it's based on something called the relational model. And the relational model is essentially a way of uh, representing data uh, in a very structured, very organized way. Uh, if you've ever worked with a spreadsheet, um, you've worked with sort of a precursor uh, to the relational model. Uh, it's a model that's very common. It's used in a lot of uh, current uh, database systems. Uh, DB2 from IBM, SQL Server from Microsoft, and Oracle, as well as a number of others. Um, and I should note that this is not the only model out there. Uh, XML, JSON are both uh, common data models, uh, data representations. Um, RDF uh, is, is a data model used for graph data. Uh, there's a whole bunch of these other things. Um, but today, we're going to be focusing on the relational model uh, because that's what SQL uh, works with, and that's pretty much what uh, data management systems have been using uh, for quite a while now. And the other thing, the relational model is uh, conceptually quite simple. Uh, like I said, if, if you've ever worked with a spreadsheet, uh, you've worked with uh, slightly less structured form of uh, a relational uh, database. Um, so, from the very top, what is a relational database? Well, a relational database is uh, a bunch of these things called relations. Uh, sometimes these are referred to as tables. Um, when, uh, if you've worked with a spreadsheet, the, the counterpoint here is uh, a sheet. So a sheet uh, you can think of as a relation or a table. Um, a relation or a table consists of a, uh, a schema which defines the structure 
um, the set of attributes that uh, belong to uh, the, the relation uh, and has an instance or a set of data values. Um, you can think of the instance as kind of the, the rows of your uh, spreadsheet. Um, a relation has a set of columns, kind of like a spreadsheet, a set of columns, each expressing uh, one attribute. Um, the name of a person, place, or thing, uh, where they work, that kind of thing. And the data, the instance, uh, consists of a number of rows, uh, a number of data values. And the key thing here is that every row has the same schema. So you can, uh, in a spreadsheet, you can put multiple sort of concepts on the same sheet. Uh, in a relational database, you'd actually create a separate table or relation for each concept, each entity, uh, each relationship that you're trying to express. Um, Honestly speaking, you can think of a relation or a table as a set of tuples or rows. So here's an example taken uh, directly from the uh, examples that we'll be working with today. Um, you can have a relation that contains a set of uh, company customers as well as a set of identifiers for each of those uh, customers. And this uh, particular relation here has an arity of two. There are two columns and a cardinality of three. There are three rows. Um, there are a number of different uh, query languages. Now this relational model, which I just covered, um, supports a number of, of uh, different query languages that you can uh, use to ask questions uh, about um, data encoded in that form. Um, the one we're going to be working with today, SQL, uh, has this nice property that it's uh, what's called a declarative language. So uh, what you do with, with SQL is you specify what you want, but not how to compute it. Um, so if, if you write a program in C or BASIC or uh, Ruby or any major programming language, you're defining an algorithm. You're saying um, first visit the first element of this, uh, the first row, uh, do some computation then visit the next row, do some computation, and repeat the process. Um, with SQL, what you're saying is, here is the, the overall computation I'd like to perform. Here is what I'm trying to obtain. Uh, and then the, the underlying database figures out the most efficient way uh, to perform that computation for you. Um, one nice feature of this is that you can reorganize, uh, it makes it very easy to reorganize how your data is stored. Um, there's, uh, you can organize the, da the, the underlying data in a variety of different ways. Uh, you can index it uh, in a variety of different ways, kind of like a, in, a, in a library. Um, um, she will, she'll be back soon. Um, you can organize it in a variety of different ways. You can index it in a variety of different ways. And kind of like a librarian, uh, a database will um, ask you what you want, you tell it what you want, and then kind of like the librarian, the database is going to figure out the most efficient way to get at the, the information that you're looking for. Uh, so if you reorganize the library, if you put, uh, you move some of the data to a different place so that it's easier to get at, uh, the librarian still knows, uh, okay, now if you ask me for that particular uh, data, I need to go to that portion of the library rather than the first portion. So uh, let's talk about SQL itself. Um, it has a, a little bit more history. Um, it has a fairly long history. It's been in use for uh, four decades uh, since IBM developed it for uh, a database called SystemR back in the 1970s. Uh, since then, it's undergone a number of revisions. Uh, and pretty much the, uh, the, one, uh, the basis for all modern SQL was pretty much uh, finalized in 1992. Uh, since then, there have been a couple of extensions to that basic model, uh, but what's used in 92, uh, was, what was standardized in 1992, is pretty much, uh, from really high level, exactly what you're using, uh, what you'll be using uh, today, and pretty much what I'll be teaching today. So, all right, enough about the history of SQL. What does SQL look like? Um, a basic SQL query, uh, looks very much like this. Uh, you have select 
from where. Um, select defines a set of targets, from defines a set of tables or relations, and where defines a condition. And the way to interpret this is that the from clause uh, defines a list of tables, and then the target list uh, identifies a set of attributes or, or columns that appear in those tables. And this, is, this essentially uh, specifies the attributes that you're looking for from those tables. Um, the final thing, the condition, identifies uh, a filtering predicate. So this is going, going to identify a set, uh, identify which rows you'd like in your output. There's also this optional uh, distinct keyword, which will eliminate duplicates for you. Now, um, I'm going to describe this uh, at a really high level, uh, mainly just to sort of prime your brains. Uh, I don't, uh, we're going to be working through a number of examples. Uh, so this is mainly just to sort of describe where we're going with this. Uh, but really abstractly, what's going on here is that we're going to take every table in this list, and we're going to pair up every value in every table with every value in every other table. Um, I'm going to take every value in, in table one, I'm going to pair it up with every value in table two. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And for all of those pairings, I'm going to pair them up with every value in table three. Keep repeating. And this is known as the Cartesian product. Um, I have this filtering predicate that's going to let me, uh, that's going to generate a huge number of tuples uh, of, of rows in the output. So I'm going to throw out those rows uh, that fail uh, this particular condition. And finally, um, I'm going to pick out just the attributes that I'm interested in. And finally, I'm going to uh, eliminate er, er, uh, I'm going to eliminate any rows that are duplicates. All right, uh, like I said, this is mainly just to sort of prime your brains, get you uh, in the right mindset. Um, Let's actually, uh, the, the best way to experience this is to, uh, as the link says, try it for yourself. Uh, so if you haven't already done so, um, go to this link. This is Susan from this. So has everyone uh, gone to this URL? We have the um, should look like um, this. Um, so uh, one quick note here, uh, just as a, a you may find it useful for the over the course of uh, today. Um, while this is a public site, uh, it doesn't have a history, so you may find it convenient to have uh, to open up a text editor. Uh, notepad, text edit, or something like that, uh, just to keep track of uh, a history. Um, so you can go back to an earlier query. All right, so um, is everyone. Is this what it should look like right now? This is what it, sh uh, almost what it should look like. If you click run SQL, this is, that is what it should look like. Minus the add. Is everyone following along so far? Is it working? Yeah, I think you just clicked on that. I did. Should I click it again? Okay, yeah, there, there you go. go. Second time, did you All right. All right. Um, so, what's going on here? Um, you've got a box here where you can enter queries and it'll run them on the database that's sort of been pre-populated for you uh, that's indicated over there. Um, the query that you see from the very beginning uh, is select star from customers. So what this is doing, it's going over every single row in the customers table and it's uh, returning every single attribute uh, that it finds. 
you can see uh, there are a number of attributes, customer ID, customer name, contact name, address, and so forth. Um, and in case you haven't figured it out already, the star means everything. Uh, so return to me every single attribute. Um, okay, let's uh, start playing with this. Let's uh, make this a little more um, extensive. So uh, what if we want only those customers uh, that live, uh, that operate out of Madrid? So we can specify uh, a condition, a filtering condition, to pick out only those customers uh, that live in Madrid. So the attribute customers find me all of the tuples where the customer's city is Madrid. Um, a couple of notes on this um, as you're typing this in to, to try it out. Uh, equality, unlike a lot of uh, programming languages, equality uses only a single equals. Um, Strings are spe specified using only single quotes, again, unlike a number of uh, major programming languages. Um, and a couple of uh, nice features are that all white space is treated the same. So you can put returns wherever, you can put white space wherever. Um, I like sort of separating these uh, to, to create readable code. Um, and capitalization doesn't matter. So this can all be uppercase, lowercase, um, the table names can be uppercase, lowercase. Uh, typically, this will not matter. Um, my personal convention is to use uh, is to use capitalization for all of the special keywords. But and you'll see that throughout the, the, the talk. But feel free to adjust that however you find uh, convenient. So, has everyone successfully found all of the customers in Madrid? How many are there? No, I didn't. Three very familiar Three. ones. All right, cool. Um, when you hit when you hit enter, it was supposed to find them. Oh, not enter. Uh, run SQL. Okay, thank you. I get an error message actually. Oh yeah. I'm not prepared. But I'm wondering if it's Chrome because sometimes Chrome is kind of close. Oh, oh you've got it? a semicolon. I don't know. Are you Take using the semicolon oh, after right customers. Oh. Uh, yeah, I Semicolons at the end. It came with that. Yeah, it came with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's like, I didn't add that. That's, you, you now <laughs> the semi semicolon is the terminator. The so semi you should have had the cursor there when you typed the rest of it. Here? Yeah. So just put the, only, just put, no, no, put the cursor at the end. Okay. Okay. Right. Put the semicolon there. If you have, the semicolon is, so depending on which database system you're using, um, you the semicolon is like optional if you have right one statement. It can be used to separate two statements. Mm -hmm. Some systems are pedantic about it. They require the semicolon always. Um, usually it's not required if you just have one statement, as in this case. Yes, exactly. You can do it without it like, as well. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like it's more like Pascal, if you remember those days. Uh, no, <laughs> it was optional. No, <laughs> it's optional for lists of size one. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Great. So, has everyone uh, successfully run this query? Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So, there's a couple of. Um, other minor little uh, syntactic uh, pieces of utility that are, are sometimes helpful in creating readable uh, queries. The first is that you can uh, rename, or uh, as, called, as it's sometimes called, alias your tables. So if you put um, so customers, space, and then a second string, or sorry, uh, sorry uh, uh, a second name, you can effectively rename uh, customers for this query. So in this case, what I'm doing is naming, uh, saying that I'm going to refer to the customers table uh, by the name C, and then when I type C.city, um, it knows that I'm referring to customers. So this should produce exactly the same results. Um, now, it didn't? Or? I was just seeing if like I did from customer C and then I did where customers dot city equals ah, Madrid okay. and it did not like 
Uh, wanted me to use the alias one for the Yeah. Um, again, there's the SQL standard is, is probably that um, a number of the precise standard has been implemented with a bajillion different sort of minor variations. Uh, what I'm conveying here is is as close to the the core set of stand uh, of capabilities as I can get. Um, consult document the documentation for your specific system if this fails. Um, okay, so uh, one other uh, way of doing this, as long as the attribute is completely unambiguous, you can just omit the, the table the, the table name entirely. Um, so once again, that should produce exactly the same result. All right. Um, is everyone convinced that this is that this also works? All right. Great. Now these uh, this where clause can be any Boolean expression, any uh, anything that evaluates to true or false. So I've got a comparison here. I can do another comparison as well, and I can combine them with a uh, with one of the several standard uh, Boolean uh, predicates. Uh, you can use and or not. Um, I don't think typically XOR is uh, <coughs> exclusive or is supported. And or and not. So how many satisfy this? What's the answer? I got one. Right. 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 It is it in the finder? Everything in the one letter can post a code. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> so you can go to the finder and then under Just application. Give you it's in there. Well, you, okay. you, I was in there. You could get it ready in the drink. Text it in. Text it in. Okay. okay. Little piece of Thank material you. outside. I'm not sure why. Uh, yeah. Or, or in the U.S., it would yeah. happen to be in the U.S. Do you have oh, your control it was over the Okay, I was just wondering, how come you, how come it's getting, um, or is this like a standard Andrew, I'm used to. Yeah. The reason why I'm asking is somebody actually is actually doing an article. <laughs> oh, you know, uh, like, like syntax highlighting? Yeah, that's yeah, what I was the, wondering. It's so not an English word, word but it's spelled. Right, oh, right. Yeah. So it's well, not like. Drew conclusions. You know, like a compiled, so like C++, if it's underlined, you should look at it, because there's a problem with that, so that's all that. People who own Here's some of the information Basically, that's because it's running in a web browser. Your web browser expects you to put English into that field. I understand what you're saying now. Right, got it. All right. So they're posting all these so does everyone successfully run this query? All right, yeah. great. Um, so just as a quick example of uh, the query target, uh, you can <coughs> specify a list of fields here, and uh, if you run this particular query, you should only get uh, the fields that you specify in the target list. So replacing the star with a specific list of fields uh, gives you just those specific fields. Uh, so, once again, um, you can omit the table name um, as long as it's not ambiguous, which uh, attributes you're referring to. Uh, 
podcast for you guys. Um, how would we obtain the full mailing address for every customer in our database? Would you come up with a query for that? Oh, sorry, the full mailing address for every customer in Germany. Make sure you use uh, capitalization. Uh, so, uh, is Germany a city? Oh, very good. Probably somewhere in the Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not somewhere. In not in this example. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Germany, Iowa. <laughs> It's been a long day. It's is I'm, I'm checking for you right now, somewhere. <laughs> I came from giving this exact same lecture in class. <laughs> well, almost exactly. So in class, would you ask them to print the country since they're all going to be Germany? Um, no. Uh, I mean, if you know that they're all Germany, you don't need to put that in there. Um, on the other hand, if Wisconsin. We, ah, okay, Wisconsin. <laughs> and Pennsylvania. <laughs> On the other hand, um, has everyone come up with a query or? Okay, can, can I move on? Uh, what it does allow you to do is trickery like this. So this is the one piece of um, non-standard syntax that I'm going to give you. Um, it is syntax that is uh, specifically for Oracle. Um, but every single platform implements this slightly differently, and the W3Schools interpreter uses Oracle syntax. Um, double vertical pipe means concatenate strings. And because it's outputting to HTML, um, like we went over in the HTML lecture, uh, BR means new line. So if you take the, the full mailing address and add some BRs, uh, and concatenations to it, what do you get? Here we Far. One other thing that you can do, um, just like you can rename tables, you can also rename um, targets or, or output columns. So you may notice that the name of the output column for this is rather verbose. Um, let's say I wanted to rename this to something more uh, understandable. Uh, what you can do is, just like you can uh, follow uh, rename a table, you can rename uh, a expression using the as field. Um, now SQL is a little bit uh, open-ended on this. You can use the as is technically optional, so you can use expression space name. Uh, and similarly, when you're renaming a relation, you can use a relation name as and then uh, an alias for it. Uh, my the custom I've seen most frequently is to omit the as uh, here and to use the as 
here because uh, it tends to be a little more, um, the expre these expressions tend to be more complex, <coughs> having that nice, uh, that as there is sort of a visual now, trigger. Now naming that with the name of a field is, a, is okay and not yes. dangerous in any way? Um, the name is applied to the output uh, and not, um, not as it's processing the data. So it would never put that in? Yeah, at address is not accessible. Not accessible from. Um, you're right. It is. There's one or two cases where it could be dangerous. Um, you're right. This is probably bad form. Um, Ninety percent of the time, it's okay though. <laughs> As with most things that are bad form. Yeah. Sometimes it's actually necessary. As in this case, you actually want to name the <coughs> address. Bless you. Most, mainly, as long as it's not ambiguous, and there's a couple of places where it could be ambiguous. Um, for everything we've covered up to this point, um, this name is not visible to the query. All right, so has everyone got their uh, mailing labels? Great. I don't know. Are we... Uh, I do. Do you? Uh, do you? You're just missing the right Is there a... I can't see. Do you have this symbol? What's your right on it? I can't see your symbol. Okay. Yeah, you left out the word from. Oh, oh I'm sorry, no. I only have a single. <laughs> yeah, that would do it. Treats it as a string. There you go. God. Mailing labels. Sweet. Just like single that. bar versus double. The kind of mistake yeah. you'll never. Never forget. Well, often well, you'll never forget. spot. Well, yeah. yeah. You never spot what a double That's is. That's why I was like, what did I do? In a full query engine, that'll usually get caught. Um, this not quite a fully featured query processing engine, so yes? Is a query processing engine kind of like a development environment? Where it'll like oh, sorry, a database, little... a full database. Oh, okay. Like Does Oracle. it have anything that'll put like little markers next to you being like, hey, I think you're supposed to put two pipes there? A lot of them will actually have uh, development environments attached to them. So. Um, SQL Server, Oracle both come with um, GUIs that'll allow you to develop queries in them. Uh, there, are, There's open source software that'll do something similar for um, open source databases like Postgres and MySQL as well. So uh, if you're using the right development environment, yes, um, is the short answer. Um, all right, so this has basically been sort of the, the high, uh, the, um, the high level uh, usage of, of SQL. Now let's actually get into some of the real power, uh, what, what you can really do um, with, with SQL. Um, so two of the, the tables that we've been working with um, are orders and customers. You can see both of them and you can find the uh, contents of both of them. Uh, by the way, uh, as a quick shortcut for this, you can uh, cl actually click on the uh, relation name and it'll run that particular query for you. Select star from that relation. Um, now, what if we have a, a specific customer's name and we'd like to find all of the orders that that particular customer has placed? Um, how would you go about doing that in, in general? Like us as people? Yeah, as uh, given what you've uh, seen so far of SQL, um, how, how would you go about uh, finding all of the orders for a specific customer, uh, a specific customer that you have the name of? Okay, so you want to find, so orders, by the way, is, uh, it, ha it has a customer ID field. So there's an ID for every uh, associated with every order, and customers, every customer is associated with a, an ID number as well. Okay, 
sorry. No, but uh, you, no, you're completely right. You, you start with the name. You find the name uh, in customers. You find uh, the record for the customer. You find the identifier for the customer. And then you can find all of the uh, orders with that particular identifier. Now, uh, one of the things you can do in SQL is actually combine that process. You can tell SQL uh, to do that kind of computation for you. And that's where, uh, that's where this multiple table uh, business comes in. So, um, going with the first uh, step of that process, uh, let's actually find one specific customer. So, unless they've changed the data in the last four hours or so, there should be at least one customer named chop dash sui space Chinese. Capitalization matters. So that's, that'll get you the one record um, for that particular customer. Has everyone got, has everyone got this? Great. All right, so now we also <laughs> want to find every single, uh, every single order placed by that particular customer. Um, now remember, what happens, so what happens when we add another uh, relation here? Does anyone remember from earlier in the talk? Uh, what happens when we add another table to the table list? Cartesian product. Cartesian. What is a Cartesian product? All the pairs. All the pairs. So I'm going to pair up every customer with every order. And uh, what I can then do is uh, this part of the predicate is picking out only those pairs where uh, the customer's name is chop suey Chinese. And then I can add another predicate that picks out only those pairs where the customer's identifier matches the order's identifier. So loosely what's happening when I, when I do this uh, particular query uh, is that I'm going to take every customer, I'm going to pair it up with every order, and then I'm going to delete those pairings uh, that don't match up properly. I'm going to delete those pairings uh, where the customer is not chop suey Chinese. So what I end up with is only the row, uh, the customer chop suey Chinese paired up with all of its orders. Is the order of these commands, does it matter? Um, the order of the Boolean predicate doesn't matter. Um, so you can do this and this. Uh, well, and is uh, commutative. So you can, um, the order of these three does. So you can only do select from where. But the customers in the orders, like in the from line, those would be that order sign. Uh, yeah, that, this yeah, is that this is not important. Uh, the one place it will show up is in how star is interpreted. Mm -hmm. So if you were to swap these, it would give you the columns of orders, then the columns of customer. Um, so to get sort of a sense of how this is is working, uh, why don't you actually drop the end clause there? Uh, sorry, drop, drop the end and just get uh, chop suey Chinese uh, and the rest. Uh, sorry, chop suey Chinese uh, orders and uh, customers uh, paired up with just the one selection predicate we're picking out uh, chop suey Chinese. You can see the uh, that your this query is producing chop suey Chinese paired the, the first I think it's seven columns or so 
um, are, par are identical for every single result because you just have the one result row. And that one result row is paired with every single um, with every single row of orders. So this was a, a fairly big thing. Um, are there any questions? Or have a sense of how join how this this Cartesian product works now? You can use that to pair so those properly. Yes. The customer ID field doesn't get duplicated in the result. Yeah, so it's even, actually, though it's a, even though you've got the full Cartesian product there. Yes, uh, so it's actually smart enough uh, to realize that um, in this particular case, because you have this equality predicate, that defines what's called an equality join. Right, but even if you don't, it's only showing one customer. Really? ID. Then it's behaving incorrectly. Uh, typically, what will happen is that you'll have two fields both named customer ID. Um, what I suspect is happening is that their uh, rendering engine is getting it wrong. But, um, you're, yeah, the, the interesting catch, uh, that is not what it should be doing. <laughs> and typically, that is not what you will encounter. All right, um, now you'll note that uh, even in the first of those queries, uh, in this one, you'll note that the first seven or so columns are all the same. You're, uh, you're not really getting much value out of those columns. Um, so in this particular case, it might make sense only to get the order rows, because you know all of the details of the customer that you're, you're asking about. And so uh, kind of like you have star, you can also do table dot star, and that's going to refer to all of the columns of that particular table. In this case, all the columns of orders. What time should, be, should I be uh, aiming to end? I think we wait said roughly an hour. Roughly an hour? Okay, so 15 more minutes or so? But, I mean, if okay. everybody wants you to keep going, I don't have a problem with it. All right, I've got, I've got progressively more and more uh, challenging exercises here. Um, so, why don't I go for another 15 minutes and then we'll see. Okay, so, um, is everyone happy with this? All right. So, class exercise. Um, how would I compute um, the, uh, the order dates of all orders originating from customers uh, in Germany? Show me because I don't. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Um, just be honest with you. Yeah. All right. So you want to print the order dates? Correct. Right. So you should select. Select is what you're going to print. So you can print the order date. 
ID. Instead of printing everything. That the ID on the order matches the ID of the customer. So all the data. Which is just order date. Oh. Because what if you have some orders? Well, you don't have to know that it's a Now we want to want to sync these up. All right. So that's, now we uh, want that's the all the order dates paired up with all of the customers. The country field so to be equal to Germany. So we don't care about the guy chops with Chinese. So, so is there C dot country? country? Yeah. Right. We did that earlier. So you can want and you'll have to back up. So do I not need customers? It's Germany, not C Germany. Because I missed. You need the customers to find the customers that are in Germany. So you want to pair up every customer in Germany. Right, because you want to make sure yeah, you, you, you want to link them. With you all, all you use more than one table, that they you always want to link it by its commonality. Okay. So the customers are it's organized by the customer orders ID, table and, the customer and the table. orders customer have ID. a customer ID okay. uh, that's so running. Um, a customer ID of the customer that's The only thing you're seeing is dates because that's all you ask to see. Okay. So to get all of the I'm just trying to think of what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but I'm trying to think of Say C down. I mean, I have all the order dates. I forget whether it's name or customer names. Give me a second. Maybe customer name. It might be easier to customer name. Or it might be easier to visualize if you select a name. Select a star. Oh, okay. Now you'll get two columns. So now you can see who ordered them what day. And try running that. Okay. And if you want it in the other order. So you've got can every customer here. Can do every customer 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 name. No, 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 no. But if you wanted the name you're first, only just do C.customer name, uh, comma, pairings so of the customer the with an order with the order. The C table is the customer. Okay. And the O table is the orders. Because you renamed it. So, I'm sorry, I've had a long day. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> it's turning it to mush. So what would the other things be associated with customer, okay, customer so name, customer, customer here, ID? Here, I, uh, I printed the customers. So. Um, yeah. But yeah. then if I do where C is This is everything in customers. Address C, okay. So, so I just, yeah. And then stuff in order right. table would be equals O customer ID. Customer. You've got customer, and you've got a set of orders. Okay. Um, Customer so the game is customer figure ID. Figure out what you want. The headings to be. ID. Um, that's what you select. Right. Then figure out what the data you um, need and is. Then the date. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, what you want is um, you want the Germany. Right. But now the problem is Germany is in C. And date is in O. So you've got no table. You've got order table and a customer. <laughs> that's your data. And so, anytime you have more than one table, you've got to link asking, them. And that's um, assuming that all that's of these are Germany. How we link them. Okay. Yeah, maybe you don't. So if I want. Um, what will happen is that I'm going to pair up every oh, tuple in here with every tuple in here. So, so, the so is, yeah, my result is to going to be so, so I want one right. paired up with ah. one Let's see, one details, what's the word? Alice, one D, D paired up with one and two. Alice, one D, E, one and three. One Feb, one, or sorry, two, two. And then the same thing for everybody uh, shipped with one Speedy uh, Express. Okay. Two Germany. Let's see. Uh, so what are you interested in here? Yeah. More precisely, one, one, two, two. Mm -hmm. And I want to know. When did so do this? Do you care about? Do you care about these this result? No. Do you care about this result? Do you care about this result? So what's? And I want to. Do you care about this result? Shipper. So this this uh, this is. I, I have had a long day. I'm like. <laughs> Uh, so this, this is an order uh, placed by customer ID one. one. Alice is customer ID one, which is yeah. so easier to type. Yeah. Um, but now I know that orders placed by both Alice so and Bob. Now we need. Um, I need a third table there, mm -hmm. so I have to link, and so I can link for.
first two. I think two. you're going to have to reverse engineer this for me, yeah. Oliver, and, and show me how to do it, and then I'm going to think about it. Like, okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I can, if I yeah. see the, yeah. the how, I'm going to get back to the. Well, so, so, so imagine that um, you've got orders. three customers, uh, and there were four orders in your system. Mm -hmm. One of the customers mm -hmm. placed all four of the orders. Right, right. When I you do the Cartesian product, yeah. you get. Yeah. Orders. That customer paired up with all these four orders. Mm -hmm. This customer paired up with all the shipper. This customer right. paired up with all the orders. But only in some of those rows oh, shippers. is the customer in the order shipper, actually. Right? I understand. Just the customer. Yeah, just the customer. You're just pulling now. Okay. Sorry. Now, make it, no, again, you, you would explain that exactly order. correct. I just needed another idea. Order. Right. Basically, you want to pair up those and pair up. Those, um, because these don't matter. It's in shipper ID. So, customer oh, I didn't call it shipper ID, ID up here. I just ordered ID. Customer ID. Um, I, I, I do understand it now, yes. Capitalization so, yeah. doesn't matter, except inside quotes. All right. Okay. You said. Following along? Okay. Now I'm going to have to go, and not just because I was confused. I have to pick up my son and his friend at, uh, at Holiday Valley. So I have to go out there now. And their oh, lift ticket ends so at 8. And first thing I did, I figured out what I wanted and when. <laughs> so I'm sorry. First thing, figure out what you want. Just just uh, one thing I do suggest is yeah. if you're interested, um, this book, uh, since it's not time you need to quote with customers. Actually, what I. Um, well, no, no, no. I figured out. And then I looked. I don't understand. And you didn't have to do all this fancy. All right. right. Um, right. Yeah, if, if you have to leave right now. But I had to type uh, customers.customer. Uh, I wanted to get to this at that. the end, but just a suggestion. Uh, so this book, SQL like in 10 minutes. Uh, yeah. This is, I think, the first edition. There's a uh, fourth right. edition out now right. uh, with a slightly different right. cover. Right. I, could do um, I highly course. recommend it. It is uh, basically customers. my pocket uh, my pocket See? guide to SQL. Well, orders. Yeah. It's a wonderful reference. All right. Thank you. I'll make it. All right. Well, I can I'm, I'm sorry that I have to leave. And then I can just. Uh, I'll, I'll have it on the slides <laughs> as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, jeez. All right. All right. Um, one I, last I thing. Even, I uh, since we're running a bit low on time. Oh, no, I can't. Uh, I'm sorry. One last thing that SQL <laughs> allows you, you to do. Kind of uh, it allows you to do a lot. Uh, one last thing that I'm going to cover today uh, is um, how it allows you to summarize data. So you have these, these big tables as output. Um, one of the other useful data manipulation processes uh, that, that you might want to do is to aggregate this data down, to summarize it into a more concise form. Um, so what I can do, for example, is to compute um, order details gives me the line item, uh, every single line item from an order. Um, maybe I want to compute uh, the total number of items that I've sold, just straight up total number of items that I've sold. And so I can use a sum aggregate. So here I define an expression, uh, a, a target, where uh, the column is inside this sum function. Um, and what that will do is that will produce a single result, which contains the total quantity of items that I've sold straight up. Um, there's a couple of other aggregates. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to focus on two of them. Uh, count uh, and min and max are two of the more common ones as well. They give you count, min, and max. Uh, count, uh, different SQL implementations have uh, different ways of interpreting this, but the, the correct uh, quote unquote way of doing this is to put a star. Uh, inside the parentheses because you're counting the entire row uh, conceptually. Um, and so that'll give you the number of customers in the UK, and this will give you uh, the maximum number of items in a particular. Uh... Wait, what about the star? Oh, uh, sorry. So uh, the count aggregate, what you're counting is technically the entire row. Uh, so uh, convention is to put a star there. Um, different database systems are more or less pedantic about whether that star needs to be there. But the SQL standard says the star needs to be there, and I think every, every database will accept the star. Some of them accept it without the star. Um, 
Um, all right. So I can. I have a bunch of other stuff I can um, bring up, uh, depending on whether there's interest. Uh, should I keep going? I can uh, simply point you at some good references instead. I have a question. Yes. Um, how do, does the user decide whether or not duplicates are allowed? Like, if one customer has more than one row? Because in, in the count situation, does it know not to count? Ah, yes, so there's a, um, one of the things I glossed over, there's a number of variants of these aggregates. Um, so there is uh, count, uh, one of the other things that you can do is instead of the star, put the word distinct and then a column name or a set of column names, a comma separated set of column names, and it will uh, identify only the number of unique instances uh, of those particular columns, or values in those particular columns. Does that address your question? Well, also, well, just in general, can I put in, will every database allow me to enter the same instance value? Like say I want to make three instances of customer, uh, it's just a really simple relation. All it is is name and address. Okay. Will every database let the instance of the three instances I want to put in all the same name? John Smith, John Smith, John Smith, as long as their addresses are different? Um, in fact, yeah. even if their addresses aren't different, a typical database will allow you to insert duplicate values. Um, as I said, Bed Bath Beyond sends me multiple coupons? You can have, <laughs> sorry? Yeah. Is that why Bed Bath and Beyond sends me multiple coupons? Uh, quite possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, it's. It, it's basically more efficient to do it that way. Deduplication is an expensive, costly operation, so you have to explicitly say, I would like to deduplicate these values. Um, the database will allow you to, explicit, to explicitly ask for deduplication, uh, but you have to tell it. Okay. Um, so it's not like a when you put it into a pool. It's a, you have to clear it out habitually. Oh, no, no. So at um, uh, the very beginning, I was talk, uh, entry. Yeah. So if I use the distinct keyword with the select, then that will make sure to deduplicate uh, rows from the result. Um, there are other features um, well beyond the scope of this talk. Uh, you can. There are uh, features called constraints, so you can set up a constraint on a table uh, that will prevent you from insert, inserting duplicate values, and then the, con the constraint specifies what it means to have a duplicate value. Um, like I said, that's well beyond the scope of this talk. I'd be happy to send you some pointers on how that works. Uh, I believe it's covered in the book as well. Um, is SQL used the most out of all the database queries? Um, if you're doing any sort of web development, uh, odds are you will encounter SQL in some form or another, yes. Um, if you're working with, uh, so database, relational databases are used to store the data for practically every single website out there. Um, that's slowly changing. There are some special specialized database systems or data management systems that um, use a slightly more complex uh, data model uh, or data models that are more specialized to certain classes of application. But by uh, by far the most common is is the uh, databases that use uh, SQL in the relational. Model. Oracle, uh, Oracle and DB2, I would say, are, uh, Oracle and SQL Server, I would say, are the two most common uh, commercial systems, and uh, Postgres and MySQL are um, very common open source options, which I think MySQL is extremely common used. Oh, uh, what am I saying? Uh, probably the most a uh, commonly installed database uh, is uh, one called SQLite, um, and that is basically what is used to store data in 
I would say 90% of smartphones out. Actually, I might even go so far as to say 100% of smartphones out there. Hmm. Maybe not Windows, uh, SQLite. but SQLite. Um, well, I get, okay, let me uh, do my quick summary slide here and then we can go back to other content if people are interested. Um, SQLite is, uh, like I said, by, by far the most uh, commonly used database system, mainly because it's the easiest to deploy. Um, you can download it very easily. Um, it takes up practically no resources, and it's one of these things that you can kind of just uh, start up, uh, load a document. The document is the database, um, as opposed to MySQL and Postgres, which actually have they kind of integrate into your system a little more aggressively. Um, installing multiple databases is aggressively more tricky. Um, these are probably the most common uh, open source systems that you'll see there. And amusingly enough, your web browser is also uh, a database. Um, so uh, here's one link if you just Google for web browser HTML5 uh, uh, SQLite, uh, Mozilla, Fo uh, sorry, Firefox, Safari, Chrome, um, Opera, yeah, I think Opera too, um, all support, all have essentially a, a version of SQLite built into them. Uh, so you can access that using uh, JavaScript, and there's some very nice tutorials out there on um, how to access them. How to access that? Yes. Are there for SQL Lite? You said it's really fast, and the document is pretty much the database. Yeah. Well, not. It's not. I would consider it the least efficient, and it doesn't support all of the features of a fully fledged database. But it's extremely lightweight, uh, so it it's gotten a lot of traction as as um, just a way of storing data in common everyday applications like web browsers. And our, this might be a very uninformed question, but our databases, do they have varying levels of security and protection built in, or are there things that you put around them that protect them? A bit of both. Um, so there are, SQLite doesn't have any sort of protection on it. Um, MySQL and Postgres both have a notion of uh, users, so, and all the commercial systems, uh, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, they have a notion of users. So the user that is currently logged in has access to a, a subset of the database, and you can control what that subset is. Um, oftentimes, uh, applications built on top of a database will also have uh, their own notion of users. And in that case, um, what will happen is you'll have a, a table which stores all of your users and their login information. Um, so. For example, in um, my uh, database that I have for a uh, writing application uh, for my class, there's a table that has all of the students in it, and it has a uh, encrypted version of their password so that when they log into the, f the application at the front, that application can go back to the database and see, oh, I have a user with that particular login information, and um, uh, I, I will give them access to whatever the application sees fit. Um, so uh, the slightly shorter answer to your question is uh, yes, uh, commercial, a lot of systems do have a notion of security, a notion of users, um, and typically applications built on top of a database will add their own notion of what it means, uh, what a user, a particular user uh, means. And if I could pick off, a, you said earlier SQLite does not. Uh, no, it's That's part of being like. Yeah, exactly. It's um, basically if you if you have access to the document that represents the database. Um, yeah, uh, but again, uh, a database sitting on top, uh, an application built on top of SQLite might have its own notion of users and build that on top of SQLite right. in the same way. Uh, let, let me throw out a question there, because I, I think probably in, in schools, a lot of schools have uh, Microsoft Office Suite. Um, how would you characterize Microsoft Access as fitting into this picture? 
Um, so there was a trend back in the 90s of uh, database systems that were that essentially combined the underlying database uh, management system with uh, some mechanism to design a user interface for that database. Um, instances include uh, Access, uh, HyperCard, uh, Claris Works. Mm -hmm. um, there were a bunch of these uh, that essentially had a database mm -hmm. underneath and then sort of a nice GUI that sat on top of the database that you could design and customize to the, the uh, table structure that you're working with. Um, so basically, I, I would categorize it as a database. I wouldn't categorize it as a particularly efficient database. And uh, I think it supports SQL in some uh, access. Absolutely. It does? Absolutely. Okay. It's got, uh, a, it's got a query by drawing mechanism. Okay. But it also has the ability to, add, and you draw something, you connect tables, and that query by drawing mechanism will generate a SQL command. And if you prefer, you can type in the SQL command on your own. Okay. So, yeah, it's, um, I would put it in a category comparable to SQL. Maybe not necessarily fully featured, but it's definitely not comparable. quite in the same, yeah, not quite in the same, at the same level as, as these guys, but um, it, it has a use. So, yeah, I taught Claris Works when I first started teaching at North, and I did the database, and boy, it's been the, since the 90s, so that's why, you know, I don't remember it all. I did database and I did you know we did some queries not to this extent obviously um, but it was boring kids didn't like it I, so can you tell me what makes it enticing for students um, so what or how we could make it enticing? sure <laughs> um, the main applicate this is a tool this is um, Unlike other programming languages, even more so, this is this is a tool. It is uh, a set of operation um, mechanisms that you can use to do much more, uh, much more. Uh, and the place that's really, really gotten a lot of traction, um, other than sort of boring business applications and managing payroll, that kind of yeah, sense. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, yeah. Where it's really, uh, where it really appears a lot is in mobile applications and uh, web uh, right. software. Which there wasn't that really right. and yeah. anything to do with The that. other thing is if you can connect it to a large database. It's like fantasy no, 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 Nobody cares about finding the um, kid with the highest grade point average of four <laughs> students in your class yeah. or of 20 students in your class do when they can look and they can see it. But if you could use it to use find, a to hit, a, hit a big database. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet that if you watch you're going to see a lot of examples of CS principles people using database queries to fulfill the big data principle. You could, mm -hmm. you could create the smallest excellent model of the NSA in three months. Right? You have to care about the data first. Yeah, yeah exactly. You have to actually, and I turn my back and the kids are always on their fancy. Things going, well, look at how much you, you know, I don't like it. Wow, how you do that? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, if, uh, if you can give them a good, uh, I guess the two major things, if you can give them a good motivation to be interested yeah. in the statistics of a data set, this is a great way to, um, SQL is a great way to uh, express those statistical questions. And the other is using SQL as sort of a data storage uh, access. Uh, model, which is not really what it's meant to be used for, uh, but in a lot of um, in a lot of web applications and a lot of uh, mobile uh, devices. I mean, in uh, smartphones, if you're doing Android development, all of your data storage um, is going to go to a SQLite database. Every single application has as a back end, a, a storage back end, uh, a SQLite database. So you've got to have some sort of um, Un, at least primitive understanding of how SQL works in order to uh, access that data. Um, same thing goes for uh, web applications. Um, if you're coding in, in PHP, uh, Rails, you'll encounter SQL in various forms.
So, um, I. Uh, Eric? Yes? So, do you think um, my students do a really simple Android app? That, you know, they make a bunch of them and then they design their own using App Inventor. Um, so, I haven't used it yet, but there must be a way to collect data through that. I'll have to look into it. But do you know anything about that comment? I'm not familiar with App, App Inventor specifically. Um, I, my, like I said, the if you're saving any data um, across multiple sessions with the application, um, that is getting handled by SQLite in the back end. Uh, whether there are enough sort of layers sitting on top of that uh, that they never actually encounter the SQL uh, with App Inventor, that I couldn't say. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I guess one last thing. Um, materials. So this uh, SQL system uh, is meant to support a uh, more general SQL tutorial. Uh, if you're interested in SQL in general, um, it's pretty good. They've, uh, they've got a reasonable, I mean, if nothing else, the uh, the utility, uh, the, the SQL evaluator that they, they give, um, I found to be by far the most uh, elegant of, of all of the ones out there. There's a couple of others. Um, this book, uh, that is the current cover, um, Teach Yourself SQL in 10 Minutes. Uh, I can't speak to the fourth edition, but the first edition, uh, this is how I learned SQL. Um, it is, it just, it's short, it's to the point, and it makes a really great reference manual. Um, and did it take you 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Advertising claims. Yeah. <laughs> Never trust them. 10 minutes a day for a year. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's, uh, I, I guess what you could say is that um, it took, I had specific tasks in mind, and it took me less than a couple of minutes to find the, the, the way that I should go about achieving a particular end. And really, that's probably the way you want to teach SQL. Um, it's a really powerful tool, but uh, really you have to have the question first. Once you have the question, uh, there's a billion different ways to specify that question. And um, yeah, start with the question, and then uh, help them find the answer. And the Postgres uh, documentation, also if you're looking for every single feature of SQL you could ever imagine. The, the documentation is amazingly well written for Postgres. So I'd look at that as well. So, all right. Uh, I guess that's Thank you. All I had.